Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to Destination Excellence. We still have people popping in, so we will start in just a couple of minutes. I would love to know who is on, where is everyone tuning in from. If you guys aren't familiar with me at all, I love for this to be interactive. We have quite a few of us on here today. Um, I know it's a little late. It's seven o'clock for me, eight o'clock Eastern time. Tomorrow it will be a lot earlier. Um, one of my speakers, Genevieve, just popped on. I'm not sure what time it is over there. She's all the way on the other side of the world. My other speaker who hasn't popped in yet. It's two o'clock in the morning for him. So I'd love to know who's on, where you guys are tuning in from. Say hello. Feel free to go on camera as well. Vince, hello, Kimberly is on, hello, Kimberly, hello, Genevieve, Rots is on, Mary, hello, Scott's on as well, hello, everyone. Where is everyone tuning in from? Feel free to write in the chats. Can you guys hear me okay? Very fine. Sound great. Kansas, New Orleans, Philippines. We have uh, the entire world with us tonight. Amazing. Australia. Hello, Miss Jean. All righty. Well, I don't want to keep you guys too long. I know we are all busy, 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 busy as always. Entrepreneurs, CEOs, um, HR management leaders, executives, all the fun things. So I don't want to keep us all here way too long. Um, it is late for most of us. Um, so yeah, welcome to Destination Excellence, where we will be empowering leaders for organizational success. Hello from Malaysia. Hello. All right. So this is, why is this not scrolling? There you go. So this is a three-day event. So today, tomorrow, as well as Friday, right? Is that Friday? No, tomorrow's Friday <laughs> and Saturday. I made it three separate times because we do have uh, people all over the world. So I did want to um, take into account everyone who is all in different parts of the world. So tonight is at eight o'clock, one o'clock Eastern tomorrow, as well as Saturday, one o'clock Eastern. So the three days will be Today, empowering through wellness and innovation. Tomorrow will be communication mastery and inner healing. And then Saturday will be prosperity, psychology, and workplace well-being. So who are we? You guys have probably received an invitation from me or one of the other speakers or Fabi. And you're like, who is Anya? Who are these people? What is Destination Excellence? What is Expansion Alchemy? So Destination Excellence, so we will be discovering the keys to building a thriving workplace environment and driving employee empowerment. So I believe that we all need a work and life balance and a work-life balance includes personal development, health, relationships, spirituality, and business. And that's all that Expansion Alchemy covers as well. All five pillars, as we call it, inside Expansion Alchemy. We'll walk away with actionable strategies to cultivate engaged employees, engaged leadership, motivate the teams, and elevate organizational performance. And uh, you'll just be able to take your team to brand new heights that you haven't been able to do so before. So all three days are will be on Zoom in the Zoom link. And make sure that you've downloaded your workbooks as well. I believe I have the workbook pulled up over here. So this is the workbook. If you don't have the link, let me put it in the chat for you guys. <clears throat> but this was sent out via the emails. If you registered as well as inside um, on a couple of the other things that I was sending. So the workbook pretty much talks about all the different speakers that are talking all of our bios and then the different keynotes that were, will be given as well. And then a little bit of more information about Expansion Alchemy towards the end. So Expansion Alchemy. Expansion Alchemy is a holistic wellness, wellness approach that focuses on making your employees healthier, more productive, more engaged, and overall more satisfied in the workplace. We do this again through our five pillars, personal development, health, relationships, spirituality, 
and financial wealth. So who am I? <laughs> I am Anya Halama, and I am the founder and CEO of Expansion Alchemy. I help busy professionals open up their hearts and align to their desired realities through different modalities and different practices. I'm a two-times best-selling author of Rebel's Guide to Spirituality, as well as Women Gone Wild, The Wealth Edition. I've spoken on national stages all around the world, like the Napoleon Hill Foundation and Women Gone Wild. I've been featured in many different media outlets, Entrepreneur Magazine, LA Weekly, US Reporter, New York Times, et cetera, et cetera. I don't need to bore you with all of that. And most recently, I've been featured on a New York Times Square billboard. So uh, how Expansion Alchemy came about. So Expansion Alchemy, I want to share a little story about my background and how Expansion Alchemy came about. So Expansion Alchemy came to me I was working corporate America for over a decade. And in corporate America, I came to a point where I was super, super sick. Anxiety, depression, insomnia. I had celiac disease. I wasn't eating anything. Any food that I tried to eat, like I wasn't able to hold it down. I was very sick. Um, I was going blind. Doctors couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. Anything I did just was not working for me. And I came to a point that I was like, my health is the number one important thing. If I don't have my health, I don't have anything else, no matter what, I don't have anything. So I came to a point in my corporate job where I can either, I was butting heads with my manager quite a bit at that time as well. And I could either look for a new job or do something crazy. So I decided to do something crazy. Mm -hmm. I bought a one-way ticket to Thailand, packed up all my stuff within the two weeks when I put a two weeks notice in, I sold my car, sold my apartment, put everything in storage and bought a one-way ticket to Thailand. I've been on that one-way ticket for almost nine years and I ended up here in Medellin, Colombia. While those nine years have been happening, I was on an entrepreneurial journey doing several things. So my background's in graphic design and marketing. So I did all of our marketing pieces, all of our website, all the fun stuff that you've seen, all of our collateral. I have done myself because that is my background. That's still something that I absolutely love to do, but corporate America jaded me a little bit and it wasn't fun for me to do that anymore. So I went down the coaching path, the mentorship path, and eventually found plant medicines. And now I facilitate plant medicines as well. But while on that path, while I was in Thailand, I started healing. I started meditating. I started going to yoga classes more. I started doing all of the inner work that I had no idea about while I was in corporate America. Sure, I've heard of meditation. I've heard of yoga. I was doing it a little bit, but it still wasn't like a core value of mine and something that I did every single day. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So once I started, quote unquote, healing, all of a sudden, all of my problems started going away. I was sleeping better. I was able to eat more foods. I wasn't as anxious as I once was. I didn't have all of these problems that I still had. And I realized most of my problems came from stress, stress in corporate America. I graduated university when I was 19 years old. I started working in corporate America when I was 17. And stress with family, stress with life, stress with having a big girl job, which none of my friends had at the time, just a whole bunch of stress that I had. And once I was able to get past that stress, life started getting better. And I was like, okay, if I can heal myself, I can help other people heal as well. Little by little, I started helping other people. I started mentoring. I started coaching, started off business coaching. Then I do spiritual mentorship right now. And Expansion Alchemy came to me in a deep four-hour meditation. Before that happened, I was on book tour. And for my second book, this is where I had my Times Square billboard. And I felt like I was on top of the world. And book tour was LA, Vegas, New York, um, Costa Rica for me. And um, and just took the entire two mo month off. And I had a thriving business. Felt like I was completely on top of the world. Came back from book tour and my entire business got hacked. I lost everything. I lost my website. I lost 300 pieces of video content I've ever created. I lost 30,000 email subscribers, which led me to two months of trying to retrieve everything back, followed by two months of having a complete mental breakdown again. 
But this mental breakdown, I had all of the tools already. It didn't last and it wasn't as hard as burnout in corporate America. So I surrendered and I meditated. In a four hour meditation, Expansion Alchemy came to me. The name, the colors, what partners I want on it, what teachers I want, everything was given to me in this four hour meditation. I spent the next year building Expansion Alchemy up. And today you guys have the launch into the corporate side. So because I was in corporate America, I know that this is something that it's not talked about as much as it should be. Mental wellness in corporate America. I'm a millennial. My sister is a Gen Zer and she has a job right now in corporate as well. And I know how important it is for them to have and for, for us, for all of us, for mental health to be looked at the right way in corporate America. If I had the tools then that I have now, I would still probably be in corporate America. Thankfully, that's not my path because my this is my passion. This is for me to bring all of it, these tools to everyone else and help uh, help the masses because they don't have the tools exactly that they need to help through. Okay, what if I'm going going through stress? What if my health isn't aligned? What if I have a conflict with uh, a teammate? What if I have conflict with my partner? The way that you deal with conflicts with a partner is the same way that you deal with conflicts with a teammate. So Expansion Alchemy came about. We have 12 teachers on board. All of the speakers that are teaching today and over the next two days are our teachers inside Expansion Alchemy. So that's a little bit about who we are and, um, and what we do. So let's go back to here. All right, so let's get started with day one, empowerment through wellness and innovation. So our first teacher that we have on is Nico Verison. Nico is a former elite athlete with world-class training and a background in mindset studies, leveraging hypnosis and mindset strategies and with from top athletes. He helps high, for, high performance transform stress into competitive edge. With over 12 years in professional fighting, Four world champions have trained in their titles under his mentorship. Nico holds an MA and has conducted research at the Free University of Brussels. Today, he's speaking to you about harnessing stress as your superpower. Hello, Nico. Let me stop sharing and then you're on. Yay, hello, hello, hello. Can everybody hear me right? Well, I will gonna try to share my screen. Because I have a little presentation. So, what we we'll... okay? Can everybody see it right? Okay, perfect. So today we're gonna learn how you can turn stress into your superpower. We hear everywhere that stress is bad for us, that stress can kill us. And that is true, if you believe it will. But today we're gonna refine our knowledge about stress and its effects uh, quite a bit. You know, if there are any questions, just raise your hand or send a message and I will answer your question as fast as I can, okay? So I was a professional fighter. And the the message that this was bad for us was very strange for me. Because every time I outperformed myself on paper, I had no chance of winning. The moment that I was in, in Japan in front of a giant crowd of in the land of my opponent, there I started to really thrive. And I've seen this with many of my clients, no not only in, uh, in fighting, in athletics, but also in corporate. So what was going on, it went so up against everything that we knew about stress. So today, we will see why it is. So today, there are four parts, three parts. The first part is we're going to learn that your body needs stress, but not only stress, pleasure and connection are also three important pillars, and I will explain to you why this is. Then we, we're gonna see how we can master our mindset, not 
to drive, not to spite, but because of Christ. I think it's really important. You know, it's that mindset whereby you know you can handle it. And then in this God talk, We'll also learn indeed to see how you can turn stress into your competitive advantage. Now, in in other in next uh shows in expansion alchemy, I go much deeper onto many of those uh of those subjects and I will expand on it even more. But first, let's see why our body needs stress, pleasure, and connection to flourish. Well, stress is there. So when we face a challenge or when we face an opportunity or when we face a threat, not a threat, our body reacts similarly. Not exactly the same, but similarly. So what happens, our body floods, uh, floods itself with epinephrine, cortisol, and acetylcholine. So with a bunch of hormones that help us to activate, to get us energy. So this is what it says there. Stress is there to rigidly help us adapt to the environment. Now, what people forget is that without stress, you will have little striving force. Now, I call the hormones that are related to the pleasure of striving after something, after going after your goals. I call this the striving pleasure hormones. And what is this? Well, this is dopamine. It's endorphins and testosterone. These are hormones that really for helping you to drive forward. Again, this is the enjoyment of the chase. And many people can get stuck in this. So when we get stuck in this, then in a certain moment, we will get to burnout. Why? Because we are not fully enjoying and fully respecting the cycle of our bodies. Because the next thing that we need is connection. What people don't realize is that oxytocin, the hugging hormone, is actually a stress hormone. It gets released when we're stressed. And you would think, like, why? Well, actually, it's quite obvious. When you're facing a saber-toothed tiger, it's better to face it together than alone. So whenever you have stress and you connect with people that are supporting you or people that are just there present with you, listening to you, you lower the baseline level of stress. In other words, oxytocin connection helps you to, you know, to buffer the negative effects of stress. It helps you to keep the stress in such a level that you can use it often. But then after the fact, after you have your goal, after you, you know, hunted the mammoth, after you won the big deal, after you won your world championship, then it is time for the last part, which is the being pleasure. And being pleasure comes down to one thing. It is celebrating what you have in the now with the people that are important to you. Imagine we are back in the Stone Age. We just caught the mammoth. What happens then? A great feast. We have, we talk, we share stories like I do sometimes, like we are doing here. We are literally singing, making love, eating, dancing, singing, making sure that we are really enjoying our lives now. Now, when I work with a lot of high performers, when they come to me after a bunch of burnout, this is often what's missing. Because very often, once they got that win, immediately the next win is there, and the next win, and the next win, without taking the time to enjoy what we have, to say, yeah, I did that. And also during the way, that's the thing I want you to do. During the day, even when you're very stressed, take little micro moments, little micro meditations, take a minute or even 10 seconds to say, hey, this is the progress I did. This is, this is all the things I did to get close to my goal. And when you do this, when you pat yourself on the back like that, it helps you to calm your nervous system, to realize, wow, I'm enjoying the path to my goals. We cannot forget this. Our life is not lived at the top of the mountain. Our life is lived in every step on the way to the top. So that's something I want you to take with you. So 
again, stress has benefits. It gives you higher energy, sharper focus, and it has you gives you a bit agitation. This is what we don't really like so much, but it is the thing that drives us into action. So it is functional. It helps. You know, they have striving pleasure. You know, and they have a bunch of things. Now the reward system. When you celebrate, you do another thing that most people don't realize. It's you heighten the serotonin levels. And what is the serotonin level? Well, serotonin is also called the alpha hormone. It is the hormone that switch switches a flips a switch in your brain that prepares you to take more forward action. So this is something that I want you to really take into account. You know, what is another thing? is that once you really learn to enjoy and embrace both motivation systems, both systems, the connecting with the here and now, the serotonin system, the inward focus, and the striving for future gains, the outer focus, the stress, you know, the striving pleasure, then we can get to flow. But without stress, without struggle, you cannot get to flow. Because you need to challenge your nervous system. You need to challenge your brain enough to activate this pattern. You know, so this is the thing that is very important. I think that I think a lot of people think, oh, I just want to flow. Oh, it's gonna feel fantastic. But flow is not how you get to, to high performance. No, flow is the result of consistent daily struggle, consistent daily preparation. And then when is the moment that you have to really go? When is the moment that you have to stand there? Then it is time to flow, you know? So again, like stress is such an important part and it has gotten a bad rep. And later we will see that how we think about stress has an enormous effect on the effects on our bodies, you know? So... Now, in the second part, I want us to learn how to use your mindset to thrive regardless of crisis. And if you know a little bit about growth and fixed mindset, it is a well-studied research. It's actually, you know, one of the mindset uh, theories in psychology that has been researched quite significantly. You know. It has been demonstrated that there are two main mindsets about the challenges in our life, about performance. One is the fixed one and the other one is the growth mindset. Now, when you have a fixed mindset, it means that you are convinced that intelligence and talents are inborn. When you say to a kid, you're so talented, you will come to the top because you were born for this, you literally are subcommunicating to them well, it's given to you. You can't work on it. You can't build it. Then you have other people that believe that through effort and through help from others, you can get to every goal. It's the thing of somebody that is, for example, two people are, are doing math. One kid is a genius. He can do it just like that. The other one has to struggle. But if the one kid that is really good at it from natural, always gets this feedback. Oh, you so good at it. You're born for this. It will not learn the resilience to later on, for example, on university, one, when he wants to become a, 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 a theoretical, theoretical physicist, physicist, for example, he will not be able to get to that, to those levels of difficulty because it always learned that it was just inborn. And so then when they face struggle, you know, you get stuck. Also, when you believe that when you have a, that intelligence and talents are inborn, then when you fail, you feel I am a failure. But if you believe that it can be built, that intelligence and talents can be cultivated, then when you fail, aha, you realize I am learning. The second thing is emotional when you, there's a big emotional difference between fixed and growth mindset. Because when you have a fixed mindset, when you believe that when you fail, you are a failure, life is an emotional roller coaster. Because then every time you get a, a threat 
to winning to being the absolute best, you have a threat to your entire self esteem. But if you believe that a failure is just a step on the road to success, then you can learn. It's still not nice, not so fun, of course, but you can really give it meaning. You say, aha, life is the challenge I love. You know? Then the next is okay, when you face struggle, there are two kinds of people. When you face a struggle and you have a fixed mindset, you have those that think it must not be for me. So there are people that 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 prefer to run away. And so that's also classically what the growth and fixed mindset Carol Dweck, you know, found that people are that have fixed mindset have are much more prone to give up more easily. But I've worked with a bunch of very highly successful people that had a complete fixed mindset, but that did get the job done. Why? Because they had a different thing. When they face a challenge, they attack. So you have two kinds of reactions. It's a bit in personality, you can see this. But the problem is that even when they get to success, they're not enjoying the route yet. They are suffering their way to success. They are almost, they believe that sacrifice and pain and that is all necessary to get to your goal. In that mind, in, in, in my eyes, that is the real loser. The loser that has it all and feel it has nothing. So, And then, of course, again, it's the identification. You know, if you then you have if you face a failure, it means that you're a loser or that you're the best. So you have it's it's when you have a fixed mindset, you live in a even a world of start zero one situations where you are the champion or you are nobody. But if you are into growth mindset, you believe that in the end you will win by consistent okay so now how can you now go from a victim or what i call i call the victim mindset the fixed mindset to a growth mindset well i want you to do this exercise for a moment and just do this mental exercise consider how much in your life do you complain give it a, a number from one to ten how much do you complain? And if you're in Europe, then you will notice that complaining is, seems sometimes to be a hobby. Let's complain together. But every time you complain, you're complaining, you're subcommunicating to your subconscious mind and to your conscious mind, I am out of control. You're focusing on everything that you cannot control and the only thing you do is complain. Judging is the same thing. Judging or labeling, you know, that's very similar. You label other people or you judge other people or you label yourself or you judge yourself. And so when you do that, when you judge, again, it is not focused on solutions. Again, think about how much are you judging people? How much are you judging yourself? How much are you judging other people? Because this and labeling is the same thing. Because labeling is like judging, but more persistent you put a label i'm such a loser well yeah if you're gonna repeat this all the time you're gonna believe it you know then it's just finding finding reasons why you are not doing the things you know that will get you to the top you know these five things if you become aware daily if you every evening do this take an audit of how much you thought and were acting like a victim in your brain, then you will already be a big step ahead because then you can start stopping this and start replacing this with other things. And one of the best ways to replace this is to replace it with question. You can question your way from a victim mindset to a grown mindset. So in when you, every time you start to notice that you're complaining, that you're blaming, 
that you're labeling, that you're justifying. Every time that this happens, I want you to think, aha, I'm acting the victim. Stop. And then what you will do is you will start to ask a different kind of question. Instead of why does this always happen to me? Why is life so unfair? You start to ask yourself, well, how else can I think about this? What are my options? Who can help me to find a solution? What are my assumptions that keep me stuck? And what are the facts that I can start to work with? And you have a bunch of other questions that you can use. A good book about, uh, about this is Change Your Questions, Change Your Life. It's, it's a really, it's a classic, but it's a real powerful book that you can use to do just this. So, now, we come to the last part. So, in this last part, we're going to learn how you can turn stress into your superpower. Now, like I said before, I was a professional fighter. And I loved stress. Literally, I loved stress. Why? Because I got trained. My trainer taught me that it was my body preparing me for the battle. And that's true for everybody else. Yes, there's a lot of research that shows that stress is bad for you. But recent stress gives you a little nuance. Stress is bad for you. Stress can kill you if you believe it can. But the opposite is also true. What happens? Now, Why? where does this come from? Well, it comes from a, a dead mice. Hans Saylor, the pioneer in stress research, he conceptualized stress as, ah, let's take this little mouse, let's put it in a, in a tub of water, make it almost drown, and then, oh, wow, there were extreme negative consequences. That's not stress. But he, he tried later on, he tried to talk about optimal stress, and he tried to mitigated, but the poor little rat already was drowned. Yeah, the people, in people it put into people's brains that stress is bad, that intensity is bad. And for me, it's the opposite. Stress and intensity, intense emotions and intense stress are the spice of life. It is what makes life worth living. Think about this. If you go on top of the Mount Everest, you're climbing, you're seeing corpses everywhere, your little pinky freezes off, but finally you come on top of the mountain. Oh, how fantastic must that be? Or you take a fancy helicopter, you're drinking Dom Perignon, you have like nice little things, you come on top of the mountain and say, yeah, cool. What is more meaningful? I think it's pretty clear. And the same things go for everything in your life. I want you to think about it. stress is an opportunity. Stress is there. Pass. A window into what is important to you. Every time you have stress, think about it. Why do I care? Well, and then you will get much more aware. Is this something I care about? Or is it something my parents or the wider society cares about? So stress can be an opportunity to get great insight into who you are and what is important to you. Now, but let's talk now about the stress mindset. So you have a stress is bad mindset or a stress is good mindset. Dr. Elia Kram from Stanford and a bunch of other researchers and more and more are showing that stress has a bunch of benefits. When you believe that stress is enhancing, in other words, when you believe that stress is there to help you, it stimulates your immune system. It lowers your chance of cardiovascular vascular, and other chronic diseases. It literally protects you against the negative side effects of stress. And what is more, in her, in, in some longitudinal research that she did, you know, over a long period of time, she found that the people that have the highest stress levels, they have the most fulfilled, happy, and healthy lives. So it goes against straight against everything that we've been told. But why? They believe that stress is good for them. So when you believe that stress is good for them, then when you're stressing, you're stressing when it's adaptive. It's adaptive stress. So when you face a challenge, it helps you to adapt to it, to 
get to your goal, to handle the threat or to get the most out of the opportunity. But then afterwards, when you get home, well, then there's no need to stress anymore because, you know, it's part of your life. It's part of the chase. And so you will not have stress about stress. Some people even have stress about stress before they even have stress to stress about. <laughs> Jeez, it's ridiculous. So we can throw away the secondary stress and we're going to focus on the primary stress. We're going to learn how to use that. Now, it's easy to say, theoretically, until you are, you feel your heartbeat, you're sweating profusely, your brain is racing, then it's not so easy. Now we're going to do a very little exercise. So let's see if we have time. Yes, we're going to do a little exercise whereby we're going to help us to ground ourselves, to realize that stress is there to help us. So it clears our brain about worrying about the stress and we can then refocus on the things that matter. So first, when you notice that you get stressed, Oh, no, that's something else. That's late. So, I I forgot. <laughs> Sorry. So, first, the, the first exercise that you can do, but you can do it at home, is I want you to think about stories. We learn by story. When we are learning and it's written in a storyline, then we just remember it. It's how we got our ancestors taught all the knowledge they had gathered for centuries. So what I want you to do is I want you to look online or look into books and create a hero story library. Now, what is a hero story? Well, a hero story is a story where people didn't thrive despite, but because of stress. Didn't thrive despite, but because of the child. Then, the second step, what I think is a very powerful tool, is you can ask others about their hero stories. You give them a gift because then when they think oh, like, when did I overcome a big challenge? You're activating those neural pathways path, uh, in their brain. You're literally helping them to realize, ah, I can handle it. I can handle much more than I think. And then last but not least, of course, I want you to do it for yourself. Find your own hero stories and ask yourself, how I have stress, intense emotions, and, you know, challenge helped me to become a better person. And, you know, how has it, what, what else has it given to me? Then the last exercise, the one that I thought we were going to do before, is stress surfing. So when you get stressed, I want you to realize you can ground yourself. And there's a lot of things, but I want you to give you the best in the business. So there are three ways to do this. And I like to do this in sequence. First, I like to do the physiological side. The physiological side imitates a natural way of our body to calm our nervous system down. And the recent research has, has demonstrated that doing five minutes of this exercise every day lowers your baseline stress levels significantly, even more than with mindfulness training. So five minutes, I think you can find it. We're going to not do it five minutes. We're going to do it just three times. Because when you're in a stressful situation, most often you don't have much time to really do this exercise. So for five minutes. But for three breaths, you can do it. So what you're going to do is you're going to take a very deep breath in through your nose as deeply as you can. Then when you can't go deeper, you take a second breath and then you breathe out with a sigh and a lot, nice long sigh. So it's like... So let's do this together. Three times. So let's go. In. So this can help, of course. If you're in the middle of a meeting, you can't do it like that. But you can do it a bit more silently. You can take this deep, a deep breath into your nose, a second small in-breath in your nose, so you really fill your lungs as deeply, and you do a long exhalation. So this will lower the activation of your amygdala, of the guard dog of your brain. Then second, you do the squeeze and release. 
Now, when you come to expansion alchemy, we're going to do go through a full training, which lasts about 30 minutes to 35 minutes, where you literally train your belly to, to, to relax. Now, again, we're going to use a natural way in which our body functions through a feedback loop. So when you're stressed, what happens, you're going really, to squeeze your muscles because you're going to be ready to fire, to fight or to run. And so what you can do is you can consciously learn to squeeze your muscles and then release it. And it's in the release that you're literally sending a signal to your nervous system, oh, it's time to calm down. So let's do this. We're going to take a deep breath in. We're going to squeeze our hands and all our muscles. We're going to feel how that tension feels. Squeeze a little bit and we're going to let it go. Okay? So let's go. We take a deep breath in. Squeeze our muscles. One, two, three, four, five. And you relax and let it go. Let the breath go and let the relaxation go too. We're going to do that one more time. And let's go. We take a deep breath in. Hold the breath and squeeze the muscles for five counts. Five, four, three, two, one, and we let everything go. And then we're going to do a sensory audit. In other words, we're going to ground ourselves in the moment. We're going to see what we see. We're going to hear what we hear. We're going to taste what we taste and feel what we feel. When you really do this, you're going to say, hey, literally, I am safe here. Even if you're in a threatening environment, you know you got there prepared. So that's it. Then, after you grounded yourself, I want you to reframe the stress with a simple thing. Aha! You notice the stress there? There is stress. It's here to help me. I love stress. So I want you to tell to yourself, think about it. How would you feel? You say, oh no, I'm stressed. Or, oh, there's stress. I love stress. Let's get it. And then, once you really reframe it, clear your brain of the struggle against stress, you can struggle with the thing that matters, with the challenge at hand. So, that's the thing. Start to rewire your mindset through consistent daily action. Practice the relaxation techniques and come and join Expansion Alchemy, where we go much deeper into every aspect and where we're going to handle a bunch more things that can help you to prevent the triggers for stress, that can help you to battle the causes for stress. So that was it. If somebody has any questions, uh, please let me know. I have two more minutes. Thank you, Nico. Stress is inevitable. We all deal with stress. It's just finding how to turn that stress into our superpowers. Thank you, Nico. Um, there was two questions that came up. I believe it was on the second slide and like the fourth or fifth slide. What is B and S and what is T-R-E-B? Okay. So B, and B stands for being pleasure. It's your focus on the here and now. It's when we really celebrate what we have with the people that are important to us. So it's B is for being pleasure. Then you have the S, the striving pleasure system, which is, you know, the pleasure of striving behind after your goals, focusing on the future, on things you don't have yet. That's the two things. Yeah. And then T, R, E, and B, that was for... Uh, yeah, it had to do with with failure. I don't. It's a bit late here. It's uh, three almost. <laughs> well, I appreciate you coming. One more. Um, does the squeeze breath have a name? Yeah, it's a progressive relaxation technique. It's a progressive muscle relaxation. It's one of the oldest techniques, but it's very good. Uh, yeah, and yeah, in, in in expansion alchemy, we will do a full session where we go deep into the that and other relaxation methods, so you can see what helps best. I have a few more that I really love, but you know, I just didn't have the time to squeeze it all in, you know. 
<laughs> Squeeze, literally. <laughs> All righty. Thank you so much, Nico. Let's go back to my screen share. All right. Okay, so that was Nico. Thank you again, Nico. I threw in a couple of stats for you guys. The first one, a recent Gallup report states that 81 percent of workers experience stress directly impact their mental health. Our initiatives at Expansion out environment when it, where individuals can flourish and we don't have to use, we can use that stress as a superpower. Nico is so good at that, him along with some other teachers that we have. Um, we really recognize the importance of mental health, emotional health, and just the well-being of employees. We take proactive measures to address all of this work place stress, but not only workplace stress, because we have expansion alchemy, we truly believe work life balance. So stress that comes up in life, stress that comes up, like your children are screaming all around, uh, someone is driving, they cut you off, like you feel stressed all of a sudden, your partner is screaming at you, whatever stress comes about, um, you will be able to take it under control and fully like live a stress free life, not stress free, but like, I love stress, apparently, like, like Nico was saying, that's something that I need to work through myself loving stress but we are committed to supporting the mental well-being of employees expansion alchemy provides comprehensive resources for stress management and mental wellness ensuring a healthier and more productive workplace that can thrive both in personal and professional lives all right Next, we have, and like I mentioned, if you guys have any questions throughout this entire thing, um, feel free to write them in the chat. We'll get to them um, either throughout the sessions, as soon as the sessions are over or at the ends. So next up, we have the Infinity Matrix, and the Infinity Matrix is led by Gary Johnson and Ross Arnston, which I don't believe Gary is here right now, but that's okay. Um, together, they offer practical tools for mastering re reality. Um, drawing from decades of experience and client interactions to address challenges swiftly and effectively. They focus on creating lasting empowerment rather than fleeting motivation. Today, they will be talking, today, Ross will be talking about applying metaphysics to get the ultimate edge in business success. So great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's really a pleasure to be here with all of you. So, you know, do you know how business executives and owners and managers and, and even the employees struggle with navigating the storm and the chaos that comes with owning or operating a business, especially in today's environment? Well, we solve this because with an estimated 12 billion days being lost every year from depression, anxiety, uh, stress-related illnesses, costing businesses over a trillion dollars per year, in lost productivity and lost bottom line profits as well. Our goal, your goal, must be to prevent these from happening, not only by finding and developing the right personnel to fill the right roles, but to instill a way to minimize risk, protect profits, and promote growth, all through a process of integrating the right mindset for the new as well as for the old to instill the relentless pursuit of excellence at every level of your organization. I assume that you're here because you're searching for new, better ways to eliminate these productivity destroyers that exponentially dissolve your profits, and not to mention your brand. And unfortunately, they're doing it all from within. In this in turn, overwhelms your internal systems to the point of sheer exhaustion. And so, of course, you want to better achieve those goals and the dreams and the desires that you may have struggled with for so long to attain. But they still just remain out of reach. We go beyond traditional means by setting the foundation. The quest to reach top, the top starts with a simple yet profound realization. Excellence is not a destination. It's a continuous journey. It begins with setting the foundations in the, in a, with a mindset that embraces growth, resilience, and the unwavering belief in one's potential. 
And this starts with laying down the principles that are the bedrock of this transformative journey. So we help our, our clients navigate those ongoing storms, creating flow, eliminating stress, anxiety, and the overwhelm brought on by modern life. We utilize unstoppable techniques that we've developed that empower all involved with the need and the will to succeed, where goals and ideas and insights come together and merge to be a better guide through the, com the complexities of life and success in your professional growth. With all of this, leading to the ultimate achievement of your business's success. And here, here we embark on a shared journey together, exploring the narratives and the shape that shape our understanding of what it means to reach the pinnacle of success. Your customer's perception of your business is the primary focus for any company, regardless of the size, the service, or the product. And at some point in the production or selling process, your company interacts with a human being at some level, whether this is internally within the company, externally in retail or business sales or service. Each of us and each of those interactions will be between people with different expectations, different standards of value, different cultures, and above all, different perceptions of you and your company. So it has to be right the first time. And technology can only take you so far. After all, it was created to boost productivity. But the cost of that is the cost of widening the gap between you and your customers. Infinite Mastery was designed to enhance the human blueprint, discovering everyone's maximum potential, igniting an innate abilities and thinking processes that are only utilized by a few of the top achievers to rebuild the human spirit and inspire it into achieving its fullest potential and having the ability to identify and solve problems before, before they become real and costly, saving time, money, resources. Imagine, imagine what this would be what it would be like, what it would do to an entire workforce. And it begins with setting the foundation, the mindset that embraces growth and resilience and the unwavering belief in one's own potential, starting with laying down the principles for that bedrock of which the following is built upon. Our first principle is at the heart of every achiever. The growth mindset. Nico talked about it just a minute ago. The belief that abilities and intelligence can be developed through dedication and hard work. The mindset thrives on challenges and sees failure not as evidence of unintelligence, but as a hardening springboard for growth, more growth, further growth, new ideas, and for stretching the perception for existing and new possibilities. And the second principle, it understands that the path to the top is fraught with setbacks and, and failures. Resiliency of failing forward is our capacity to recover quickly from difficulties and is a critical trait for those who achieve greatness. It's about facing adversity, and facing it head on, learning from each setback and moving forward with increased strength and wisdom, and set aside the past as the past. Tomorrow's vision is the target. And while principle three encompasses success as a professional journey and what it means to reach the top, it varies from one individual to another. Defining each person's own success is the key to understanding their values. 
their passions, their purpose, and above all, their motivations. It's about setting goals that resonate with their deepest aspirations and pursuing them with a tenacity and perseverance. With those primary principles in place, the journey continues by navigating the path successfully, knowing it's a path marked by personal growth and continuous learning and the relentless pursuit of goals. Along this path, we mentor and guide, and we obliterate obstacles that test resolve and recognize and celebrate the opportunities that broaden our horizons. And to do this, one must learn to harness the power of disciplined focus and strategic planning. Discipline ensures that the commitment to your goals remains and that the distractions of life don't start getting in the way, especially when the going gets tough. The focus allows the channeling of energies towards what truly matters, avoiding distractions that can derail progress, allowing that strategic plan to be established and executed through manageable steps. These are the critical steps required by anyone in the business arena. While embarking on this journey to the top, it's crucial to understand that this path is less about external factors and more about what happens within. That's what will set them apart from the rest. It's not just intelligence or talent. It's a unique way of thinking and seeing the world that only Pete propels them forward. So, as opposed to limiting ourselves to just social and clinical psychology or some motivational parlor tricks, we incorporate a metaphysical enhancement to business practices that deals with the nature of reality. With concepts of being, existence, causality, and identity, and integrating these principles of nature into everyday situations such as decision-making and team-building, problem-solving, creativity, communication. All of this will cause a profound exponential effect in daily business actions and personal growth, stress reduction, professional excellence, and taking your business, taking it from great to extraordinary. And a key benefit of the work that we do is to delve into the, the core aspects of this profound type of mindset, offering insights and practical strategies to help you adopt this transformative way of thinking. The first and most crucial step is embracing a system, a system that is designed to systematically support the ongoing success of each endeavor. This is not motivation, as we are not motivational speakers, <laughs> nor is it here, read this book, and nor is it a series of morning affirmations, but rather it's concise exercises to strategically overwrite the existing negative and unproductive thought patterns with new, stronger neuro enhancements. So, Here's the scoop. This is where this came from. We recognize that once you go to a lot of seminars or traditional training programs, it all sounds great. It's all lots of rah-rah. Oh gosh, I, they leave and they're jacked up. They're like, this is gonna happen. It's really gonna happen. I can't wait until it happens. It's gonna, it's gonna, it's really, really. And then one, maybe two weeks later, life gets in the way and the old programming returns the old habits come back into play. You may recognize this from the thousands of yo-yo diet programs that are out there. Everything is generated by willpower and willpower is finite. It can be worn out and worn down. The infinity process is designed to correct that effect and empower you, which in turn 
prevents this from happening. Students will understand how they interact with the, the surface layer of their current reality. We're here to explain that there are many, many hidden layers existing below, above, beside, internally, externally, in your reality. By the end of the training, you will learn that the infinity process is first 10 degrees of integration that will allow you to code your reality, thus influencing it to better work in your favor. Your team will learn the neuroscience behind the productive and the non-productive behaviors that they currently exhibit. Most that they probably are not aware of. They will learn how to modify those behaviors to a point where they are consistently remaining in the eye of the storm rather than in the chaos. They will tap into a hidden code built into every environment, learning the skills to manipulate that environment to create a newer, better, more empowering reality. Because after all, think about this, after all, you're already doing it now. We're just suggesting that you do it on purpose. On a minute by minute, by minute, a day by day, an hour by hour, a week by week moment. This isn't a just a one-time shot. This is a learn it once and you live it forever. It's power. Participants are given access to the, the hero's compass designed for those aspiring to excel beyond the ordinary. Through each session, we delve into the mindset, strategies, and disciplines that distinguish the top 1% from the rest. From mastering time management and cultivating high-performance habits, to embracing innovation and leading with influence, we cover it all. We unravel the secrets to not only achieving, but sustaining success at the highest levels. And those levels are different for everyone. In our years of practice in this arena, we have found that there are so many souls looking for connection, looking for connection with the universe, looking for connection with others. A connection that can be forged to allow you to do so much more. Because when you utilize these innate skills and talents, this intrinsic superpower that you have Within you, you'll think you're magic. You kind of are. Imagine, just imagine, a team of employees that use daily meditation of focusing attention on a single object, thought, or sensation, and letting go of any distractions or judgments, calming their mind, reducing stress, enhancing their con concentration, and accessing their intuition. Imagine a team visualizing mental images of what they want to achieve or experience and feeling the emotions associated with that achievement, clarifying their goals and motivating themselves, boosting their own confidence and attracting positive outcomes. Imagine every morning declaring your day Imagine throughout the day, whenever they encounter a challenge or a setback, declaring the outcome. This is how it will be. Declaring, quant uh, the, the, declaring the qualities that they want to develop, that they want to demonstrate and see in your business, such as creativity, such as leadership, integrity, or excellence. And if you haven't noticed yet, there is no victimhood here. It simply can't exist in this new neuro environment. These are just some of the metaphysical aspects of conducting business. Regardless of what kind of business, you can incorporate these into any profession and for optimal results also in your personal life. And as Anya said, you must have a full balance. And that's one of the big benefits of the hero's compass is it shows you on a regular basis 
the balance that your life is in. It's not an app. It's your brain. By incorporating these, you will unleash the inner wisdom, unleash your potential and achieve greater success and greater satisfaction in all the workflow. You just have to want to. You just have to understand that it exists. And it can be learned. And then if you find yourself plateauing, you now know deep down that the universe is boundless. And you can't get blocked by an earning ceiling because there is no ceiling. If you can't get past a particular revenue gain, then it's time to venture within because it's very possible that there are some mental barriers that are just a matter of getting by and getting with somebody and discovering what they are and rewriting your own future. You know, there's, there's an adage that says, believe it and you will achieve it. Whether you feel that you deserve it or not, declare your day today. Declare your intentions today for 2024. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be grandiose. It does, however, have to be started. Doing it now really makes a big difference by understanding how the metaphysical aspect intensifies the energy that you project and begins a thread, a thread in that cosmic tapestry of existence. Be well, everyone. Thank you. Anya, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Ross. Thank you. Um, I recently started writing my own intention. Like first thing when I wake up, even before I meditate, like meditation for me is a non-negotiable. That's the first thing I do when I wake up. But even before that, I started writing down what my intention is. What is my intention today? Like, how am I, how am I going to live my day? And then going one step further on like a business side of it. And I want all of you to guys to start doing this with your teams. Like, how are we making money today? Like, what are the steps? What are the actions that we're going to take to start making money today? I want you to start doing that with yourself and with your teams as well. Have your teams, like first thing when they come in to work, how are we making money today? Set that intention and then start writing those actionable steps. So thank you for that, Ross. So that was just my little side note on all of that. <laughs> All righty. Happens to get into. <laughs> all right. So I want I pulled some other stats. I was pulling stats like all night yesterday to prepare for this. And one that really blew my mind, and I wrote it in the thing, and Ross kind of mentioned it earlier, was like eight trillion dollars are lost on productivity like yearly. Like that was mind blowing to me. But Besides the point. So expansion alchemy, we prioritize personal development because we understand that it directly implements and impacts employee well-being, not only employee well-being, but like personal well-being as well. According to a study in Gallup, this um, focus increases the likelihood of overcoming any kind of challenges that they might have in their personal lives and in work lives by 36 percent. They're able to tackle those um, those obstacles with confidence and like strive through them if they have the right wellness tools implemented. By investing in employee engagement through personal development initiatives, Expansion Alchemy not only fosters more enriched workforce, but we also but it also drives profitability. Research from Gitnux reveals that companies that undertake such investments um, experience 21% more increase in profitability. That was another mind blown to me. Later on, we'll talk about like individual um, profitability. So next up, we have Genevieve Searle. So Genevieve is a TEDx speaker and her talk, How to Thrive in an Era of Uncertainty. She mentors individuals to align with their genetic, genetic potential and soul purpose using a blend of epigenetics and hormonal profiling, ancestral alchemy, and other things, which she recently started implementing. So she helps clients tap into their power. Genevieve is also a best-selling co-author in a book that her and I co-authored co together amongst other women. Um, and a force for transformation. Today, she will be sharing precision health with AI technology. Hello, Genevieve. Hello, can you hear me properly? Yes, we can. Okay. 
Amazing. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you to uh, the other amazing speakers. So this has been great, actually, because you've all kind of laid the, the foundation for what I want to talk about. And then we can move into, you know, how do we how do we actually make this actionable? How do we make a lot of these things actionable at a um, at a, in a very grounded way for individuals? And the reason I want to talk about this is because, as Anya said at the beginning, health is like our foundation. If we don't have our health, we don't have anything. And that goes for us personally, but it also goes into our teams. Like if we've got team members that are sick, that is going to affect the, the, the well-being, the thriving capacity of any business, right? It's a no-brainer. We know this. And we also know that we are flooded with information about how to be well, how to be healthy. Like there's so much information out there and every single person in the Western world knows someone who has tried a thousand different ways to lose weight, to get fitter, to get healthier, to, you know, overcome chronic illness, to overcome depression, to overcome anxiety, um, to increase motivation. We know all of the, like, there's so much out there and what is missing from nearly all of that is personalization. And the reason it's missing is because people haven't been able to, um, they, they haven't been able to bring enough information together to be able to, to personally assess themselves and then you can take it out into other people you know or into your team. We can't personally assess ourselves because we don't have the technology until now, except if you were looking at something like genetic testing, which has cost a huge amount of money. But what we have access to now is very accessible Um it's very accessible, cutting edge technology that I'm going to take you through some slides and I'll show you how it's done, but it uses very simple data. You can do it in the comfort of your own home. It is not genetic testing. It doesn't require saliva or blood tests or anything like that. Um, literally, you can just take measurements from your body, fill in a questionnaire, and you can get a very precise and evolving profile. And this is one of the things that I love the most about this because, you know, this is expansion alchemy, right? And so that we're talking metaphysics, we're talking spirituality, we're talking all of these, um, you know, I guess, beyond the body things, whereas this brings it back into the body. And it's one thing to have these, you know, fabulous, you know, high end visions and these, you know, deep spiritual insights or this, you know, these sort of, you know, the bigger picture piece going on. But if we can't actually ground this into reality, starting with our own physiology, with our own body, then we are going to struggle continually when we actually understand who we are, understand how we're wired and know that that's based on our biology at a very personal level, then the whole game changes. And that's what, of the, what I love the most about this. This, take, this technology can meet us in every area of our life, no matter what, what area we're focusing on. And it can help us uh, and it does it in a very, very personal way. And because it works on our own personal data, we can re-input that rather than say on a birth date, for example, which or on a subjective questionnaire like Myers-Briggs or any of those personality tests, or if we have a look at, um, you know, astrology or human design, which are all amazing. And I actually work with all of those. Um, but those things are based on things that are outside. They're not in, they're not, with subjective, with subjective tests like, um, you know, personality tests, we can fudge the data, right? We can, we, can change, we can change our answers to suit the question based on how we're feeling at the time or the situation we're in. And if you, get, if you have employees and if you've ever done a personality test, you can write, you know that, uh, people will respond differently to different questions in different environments, right? Um, when you have something like astrology or human design or gene keys, which is awesome, but it takes your birth date. And so some for some of us, that's going to be difficult to 
embody, to accept. But when we come back to our physiology and we actually look at how we how our body is created, then we get a very um, we get a very grounded perspective. So I'm going to share my screen really quickly and we're going to have a look at what I'm actually talking about. Okay. My internet is slow in Australia at the moment. Sorry, we're getting there. Okay, so try, transform your life from the body up with AI technology. Often we're talking about mind and mindset and we're coming from body, we're coming from the mind down, but this is actually talking for, about all of this and how we can change our lives from the body up. And interestingly, our mind is built from our body, not the other way around. Our mind is built from our body and this happens very early development. So you, who you are, how you look, how you think, how you behave, the diseases that you have, the, the emotions that you have, the way you process your food, the way your nervous system works, this is what we call your phenotype. And this comes through firstly from your genetics, which we all know about. These don't change, but they influence these pillars, right? They influence, they talk to our hormones and they talk to something called epigenetics. Epigenetics is the science of gene expression. So this is, while this doesn't change, we can turn our genes on and off. And everything in our world, the movement we do, the relationships we have, the thoughts we think, the food, the drinks and the food that we have, the places we live and our ancestry, our family tree, all of these in, uh, influence our gene expression. And they talk to our hormones and our hormones talk to our epigenetic expression. And as a result of all of this put together, we come up with you as you are now. Now you can imagine that if we can, if we have some level of control over our genetic expression, if all of these things ex affect our genetic expression, then we can have some level of control over our genetic expression, right? We can, if we change where we live or we change the food we're eating or we change the thoughts that we've been thinking as, you know, Nico and Infinity Matrix have already been talking about this morning. If we start to, to harness the thoughts that we think, we can actually change the expression of our genes. And this is all going to be represented through the hormonal, our hormonal profile. Now, epigenetic expression and epigenetic profiling, which is the technology that I work with, incorporates all of this. As a, as a, at a basic, when we are in very, very, very early development, I'll just get this out of the way. When we're in very early development, there are going to be three layers that our, um, uh, that sort of pre, be, before we even become a fetus. This, we have these sort of germ layers and we have the ectoderm, which is responsible for our brain and our nervous system. The mesoderm, which is responsible for our musculoskeletal system and our sex hormones and sex, um, sex organs. And the endoderm, which is responsible for our digestive system and all of our, in, most of our internal organs. And depending on which area of our body got the most, um, got kind of fed the most, depends on whether or not, depends on which systems in our body are the most dominant. Now, obviously we all have all of these, but you know that, and you will know when I talk about these more, that different people obviously um, are stronger in different areas. You know that there's some people who are very, who have a very heightened nervous system and who have a very switched on data orientated brain. You know that there's people who are naturally muscular, who are naturally um, fired up and physically, uh, physically strong and, and athletic. And then also you'll notice that there's going to be people who are going to be, tend to be, you know, carry a bit more weight because they have the capacity to actually digest their food properly. So the way that this profiling works is that we take physical measurements of the body, 16 different measurements 
combined with our ancestry questions and health lifestyle, um, health and lifestyle questions. Take all of those and we it goes through um, this evolving profiling system. So you can re-import all of this data as many times as you want. And as things in your life changes, you can change what you have put into your, uh, into your profile and your profile will update. So you could do this on a daily basis if you want. They recommend that you do this every six weeks. Ultimately, once you come through with this, you're going to end up with a general profile that tells you that you are going to be dominant with one, so in, in one of these areas, you're gonna sit somewhere around here. For me, I sit here. And now Nico was talking about hormones like oxytocin, dopamine, uh, testosterone, uh, adrenaline, and, each one of those hormones, each one of us is actually dominant in one of these hormones. And these different colors represent a person who is dominant in a specific hormone. Yellow represents people who are dominant in the hormone oxytocin. Green represents people, the guardians represent people who are dominant in the hormone of prolactin. Diplomats, orange represents people who are dominant in the hormone serotonin. Uh, purple represents people who are dominant in the hormone vasopressin. Uh, crusader and blue represents people who are dominant in dopamine and activators. The red represents people who are dominant in adrenaline, testosterone, adrenaline and testosterone. So when we understand which hormone we are most dominant in, and we know because we have the, this incredibly powerful technology, profiling technology that tells us how to take care of that hormone, that, so we know how to take care of ourselves and how to take care of uh, that hormone in particular, then we know um, how to set up our whole lives from the food we eat the, to uh, the movement we do, to the relationships we have, to the way that we set up our daily schedule, to the way that we um, set up our physical environment, to the way that we set up our business and the way that we are naturally get into flow and in our natural genius and the best ways that we work. We can set all of this up based on our unique physiology. Now, if you are a solo entrepreneur, then obviously having this kind of information to know how you work best, how you're going to be able to eat for your unique biology, because yes, we come under a kind of a, a category, but we're all individuals. And you can see the lines in here. We don't just have one hormone. I don't just have serotonin. It's just the number one that I need to look after. I have all of these hormones and many, many more. And so does everyone else. I just know that I need to put this one first if I'm going to be healthy and happy and productive and motivated. And this takes, yeah. So if you're a solo entrepreneur, knowing this information is absolutely game changing. If you have a team then knowing that you work one way and other people in your team work another way and which areas they are going to be best in and how they communicate and what they need and what they value and how to motivate them. Because if you're talking to a guardian whose um, who's dominant hormone is prolactin, they are motivated by family, by tribe, by um, by making sure like if they if they're motivated and stability and creating stability in their own lives and in the lives of their family if they don't have a family then it's going to be in the lives of the people they love and the value they most that they love and value the most and that may be the business that may be other members in their team so they're going to want to create a family environment in their team this is what they are wired and primed to care about and they are very good at they are natural nurturers so if we give them the opportunity to be natural nurturers and to be and to take uh, care of us in very practical ways, so these people generally are very good workhorses as long as they feel like they're they're valued and part of a of a, uh, a family environment. 
These people, on the other hand, though, wired by dopamine are absolute high end, go for it, high end achievers. They need a mission and they will go hard at it go hard at it and they will keep going hard at it and often once they achieve one little mission they will go to the next mission and go to the next mission because the process of going after something actually fuels their dopamine levels but these people are you know guardians and crusaders are very very different they are motivated by different things they have different physiological needs and when we understand this and understand it about ourselves that we, I might be wired like this, but someone else might be wired by prolactin and need very different things. Then we can actually start to create a, a um, an environment, a work environment, a home environment, a life environment, and a personal environment that is supportive of all of this. I've just seen some uh, questions in the chat. Let me have a look at that. Is it going to come up? Okay, I'm going to get to those questions later, sorry. So this is going to give you a quick um, overview of the different health types. And I, I go, I have been with Expansion Alchemy since the beginning. So I have, um, I don't even know how many masterclasses on there. And we go through everything from setting up your individual circadian rhythms to relationships and personal connection uh, to, you know, dealing with ancestral trauma, using this as a baseline. As I said, the um, the guardian health type. So they have a particular physiology. They are stronger. They are more robust. They have thicker thicker wrists, thicker bones, and they and this is reflected by their um, by being dominant in prolactin. And that prolactin not only has, as I said before, you know, it has a a psychology to it. Each of these hormones has a psychology to it as well as a physiology to it. So we can look, I can actually look at people and go, I mean, if you look at the guardian here and the sensor here, they're very different, very, very different. And this one is in, in the middle. So they're very different um, bodies. And as you can imagine, Someone like this is going to, because they are naturally bigger and naturally stronger, they are primarily more capable of dealing with stress. You can imagine, like they have a robust bullet body and they also have a robust mind. They have a robust psychology. They can handle a lot of things. They are natural workhorses. This body over here is not designed to handle huge amounts of physical stress. They are finer. Their bodies are, their bones are less fragile. They are not built to be workhorses. They are built to be brains. They are incredibly intuitive often. They are incredible at collecting data. They um, will also be more prone to anxiety these people over here will be more prone to depression. Um, and you can imagine that somewhere in between, right? So I don't have time to go through all of these in depth, but I have gone in through to all of these in depth um, many times. And there um, is a huge amount of research, uh, of, um, a huge number of masterclasses in expansion alchemy already talking about all of this and these different these different types of people. Um, so the Crusader, these are the ones wired by dopamine. Activator health type wired by adrenaline and testosterone. The connector health type wired by um, oxytocin. So Nico was talking about connection and the value of connection. Well, we gen we have people in our world. If you don't have them in your team, you will have them ideally in your life. People that are fun and that will that that are inspired to create connection and bonds, like personal bonds, all of the time. We also have uh, people who are desired to create action, to get, to initiate things, to get things off the ground. These are the activators. They are physically wired for to activate and they are mentally wired to activate. Um, it's all written in our body and our body can evolve now. It, as I said before, this is an evolving profile and we talk a lot about it. 
Um, people can shift. And I know people who have shifted. In fact, I know someone who has shifted from here all the way over here. So if you have a look up here at the, um, at the little color wheel, you can see the yellow all the way around to blue. You know, they've had to travel quite a, quite a distance to get there. And they've gone from being dominant in oxytocin to being dominant in dopamine. Now, um, and that has come about by changes in their lives, in the way that they set up their, yeah, in the way that they set up their lives and set up everything, the way they approach their food the, and, and how they prioritize things. Now, if we bring this back to business, I talked before about um, the, you know, motivation and thing and, and health, obviously there's health and and wellness and we need to prioritize different every person is going to need to prioritize a different part of their life based on how they are wired in order to achieve whatever it is that they want to achieve so if they're after i will just move this i saw you taking a photo so i'm just going to move this out of the way so that you can hopefully get it in there if it'll let me there we go that might be a bit easier um so if you are after optimum health, if you are after, if you want to, if you're a guardian, for example, these people tend to hold more weight and they want to lose weight, then food is actually second on their list of priorities. The first on their list of priorities is making sure that the people they care about are okay. If, they, if the people they care about are not okay, then it does not matter how much they fast they will still pack on weight because these guys are the ones that are designed to last when the whole village is burning and have everyone's back. They are the salt of the earth. They are the people who are going to take care of the tribe. So they are built for that and they will store weight with the, the more stress they have, the more weight they will store. And most of their stress is, 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 you know, unless they've learned to be able to transcend their mindset around stress. And I would say Nico is probably an activator, uh, probably with a bit of crusader, right? So, so he naturally is going to have a different physiological response to stress and activators as a general rule, love stress. And so do, so do crusaders when they have learned how to harness it properly. But other people don't love stress so much. It's people who are wired by serotonin, for example, as Nico was also talking about, he was saying serotonin is like the beingness hormone. It's, a, it's being in pleasure in the now. And so these people have a different relationship to stress and they're actually incredibly resilient, but because they are wired naturally to be more present in the moment, in the now, that means that um, they actually need to put pleasure first in order to then have, and as he, he, Nico actually said this, once we have a certain level of pleasure, then we are then inspired to go to the next place. If you just understand this about, uh, for me, understanding that I was a diplomat and it's actually vital for me to start my day with pleasure that, and that that pleasure, for, having pleasure first fuels my inspiration and my energy, my vitality and my capacity for the whole day, then I, I get so much more out of my day. I am much healthier and much happier now because I have changed my schedule to prioritize my early mornings to be around um, having enough time, space and pleasure. Guardians will need to make sure that the people they care about are looked after before they can um, really do anything else well. And because we're um, this one here, I'm talking mostly about health. If I want to look after my health, I don't go to food. That's number four on my list. I don't even go to mindset practices. What I need to do is get out in nature and take my morning slow. That is going to take me into health, into motivation, into wellness, into a better place and a state of mind than anything else will. And then I move on to making sure that I'm doing something that I'm passionate about, that I care about, all right? 
So different people, if you're an activator, then yes, get up, get up with the sunrise, get out in and, you know, go to your CrossFit class, go do some like high intensity workout, go and do like, get, get going. And then it's food. Like this is, you know, and a lot of our, a lot of our industry, uh, the health and wellness industry has been built around understand around sort of like food and movement. But for some people that's like way down here in terms of being their most healthy. So I'm going to not go on about this anymore because I could be here for a really long time. I'm going to stop my share and I'm going to uh, answer some of these questions. But what I wanted to say was, um, whoo, we've got a few here. Okay. <laughs> okay, great. Yes take it nature and take it slow thank you yes yeah, stress and challenges okay cool so are there any questions that you want to you want to just flag me how am I going for time Anya I'm okay how long have I got five minutes okay does anyone want to throw a question because these are plays what and so the question is what does that mean what am I talking about when it comes to place in fact actually come off talk to me yeah okay um, feel free to answer to come off your microphones and we'll actually have a little conversation. So place, yes, this is physical environment. And actually I've been deep diving in all of this because I've been working with this technology now for four years. I've been working with epigenetics for about seven years. Um, and, but this profiling technology cut through all of the things that I knew and just went, boom, this is how you apply it to an individual person. So this is like, this is incredible. So in terms of place, yes, people who are wired by serotonin. Okay, serotonin, the happiness hormone, the being in the moment, being in pleasure now hormone. What do you think they would need from a physical environment? Oh, all the questions. Go through and if you do sign up to Expansion Alchemy, if you're already in it, then go and watch some of my masterclasses because I tell you over and over and over and over again how you can get your profile. <laughs> so if, if you, if for, for just to go back to plays, if you go back to plays, like someone who is wired by um, serotonin needs beauty. They need a beautiful environment that they can feel really at ease and to be present in. If they're in, and I have noticed this myself, I've actually been tracking myself because I never allowed myself to, in, uh, to embrace beauty previously. This is a very new thing for me because I've always been like, you know, a warrior and becoming more softer and more feminine and embracing beauty is actually honoring my physiology. And I now understand, I can now see why I can get depressed in an environment that is really stark, it's dark, it's really uh, tech, like really high end techy, or like being in a shopping center, I hate it, but you put me outside and my mood changes instantaneously. So this is actually it changed being in a different environment changes my genetic expression colors yes although people who are wired by oxytocin are going to be more uh susceptible to different colors so they can be in an artificial environment but as long as it's got colors that are aesthetically appealing because they're very visually orientated then they will be super excited by that Magnesium, people who are wired by serotonin need a lot of magnesium because they chew through it. And sound and music, yes, absolutely. Changes your emotional state for people with serotonin in particular. Um, but all every single person has a different sensory, uh, like a different sensory perceptor that is going to be more dominant. So it's going to be your eyes, your physical touch, your sound, um, taste, all of these, th everyone has something that they're going to be more dominant in. Um, does anyone else have a question quickly? And feel free to just talk to me. No. Uh, dopamine would be the speedster. Um, yes, it can be. 
when they when they have a mission if they don't have a mission they can go into overwhelm and if they go into overwhelm then they can be kind of flounder and they well they tend actually no they tend to be busy anyway but they tend to be busy doing stuff that may not actually be helpful so they can do an awful lot of like heaps and heaps of stuff that actually equates to nothing but when they have harnessed their dopamine and have connected with their mission then they are on fire and nothing in the world will stop them so i'm feeling like my time is probably up but what i would say is um this stuff is absolutely leading edge it is absolutely leading edge i think the practitioners um super high amounts of exercise Yes, probably people with adrenaline and testosterone, they need to move a lot because they need to channel adrenaline and testosterone. They need to move it through them. Um, no, crusaders are white, but dopamine, adrenaline, and testosterone is activators. But anyway, I've got all of that already recorded. <laughs> so go and have a look at it. Take, I'm not going to take up more time here. Um, but but yes, the number of people, number of practitioners in this technology, number still in the hundreds globally and I am one of them and you have access to huge amounts of information already there um, high 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 levels of value and a way that you can access your own profile which will change your life your own health as well as the the, the health and well-being of your team and your business amazing thank you so much for your attention thank you thank you thank you yes Genevieve is absolutely amazing I've watched many of her master classes come on live to some of them she's incredible mm, thank you Genevieve for your time all righty so let's go back to some stats based on findings from Forbes um, by investing in employee well-being you significantly reduce absenteeism by 41 percent leading to substantial cost savings for the entire organization. Additionally every dollar invested in employee wellness initiatives yields significant returns. According to Wellable each dollar invested reduces a medical cost by 3.27 dollars and absenteeism by 2.73 dollars demonstrating a clear balance between the financial benefits and prioritizing your employee well-being. Amazing. All right, next up, we have Melissa. Melissa Faith Benamiras is a medicine woman, intuitive guide, and shamanic seer. With experiences from over 50 countries, she is currently in Egypt, I believe. Amazing. She embraces her resilience and divine power. Melissa's mission is to lead others through their own awakening journeys, helping them reclaim their powers and embrace their sensuality. Today, she, she is speaking on health, healing this ease by addressing the root causes. So, Melissa, hello. Assalamu alaikum, everybody. Coming to you from Egypt. This is fabulous. We're on the last stretch, my people. <laughs> so actually, let's do a little physical stretch for just a moment. Let's raise our arms. Take a deep inhale. Bring our arms down. A nice exhale. Moving the body. Maybe just a little reminder to give ourselves permission to do this every so often. Because when we flow, then life can actually flow. When we move, then we can move through whatever we are experiencing in the moment. Hmm. All right, my loves, my name is Melissa Faith Ramirez. Thank you for the introduction. And thank you, my beautiful expansion alchemy teachers. Um, as you can see, we're all fucking rock stars. <laughs> so this is an amazing platform that has been created by our beautiful Anya. Um, and it's going to be, it's revolutionary. It's changing the world. And what I'm going to be talking about today is the new medicine, which is energy. We are leaving the age of material 
and we're entering the age of frequency. What does that mean? That means that we are remembering that our own bodies are these beautiful vessels of self-healing. Our own bodies, when our nervous system is regulated, when we are in a calm, present state, when we are allowing ourselves to be present and detached, right, because we suffer from attachment, then our bodies can do what it naturally does, which is heal. So today I'm going to be talking about And as I'm about to speak, something already swoops in. So give me one second. <laughs> so I'm an intuitive um, guide. And every so often when I'm teaching, I receive this guidance and information. And I already hear somebody here in the group. I'd like to keep open up the floor later on, if and when you guys would like, to anybody that would like a little hot seat today um, with regards to their own personal situation. I can intuitively guide them through their process to see what it is that they need healing with healing for and there's already somebody here that I'm hearing so please feel free at towards the end to raise your hand if that's you so we're going to be talking about healing the root cause of dis-ease 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 lack of ease that's all disease really is it means there's some sort of blockage there's some sort of disconnect there's some sort of lack of flow that is present and that is causing a stagnancy, is causing a block, right? And is not allowing things to go as smoothly as it normally needs to go. So when we address the root cause of this illness or this dis-ease, then magically the physical manifestation, which is the illness, no longer needs to live, right? Because the physical manifestation is just a representation of what is going on within. So when we address the root cause, then voila, the physical no longer needs to be alive, right? And our body is constantly speaking to us and letting us know what the heck is going on. But because we're so busy and we're so distracted and we're so brainwashed <laughs> to not think that these gorgeous bodies of ours are constantly speaking, right? And we're not paying attention. Then we just keep pushing through and we're going along with the agenda that we need something external to take in order to heal us, which actually is just healing the symptom, but not helping the root cause of the disease, the root cause of the illness, right? And I'll use an example. I have a beautiful client that I worked with um, not too long ago who came to me with breast cancer. And it was on her right breast. And the right side of the body is the masculine side of the body. And cancer of the breast is there is an attachment to something that needs to be released. And her history was she was the quote unquote bastard child of her father. She was rejected by her father, rejected by her father's side of the family. And she always carried this guilt and this resentment and this um, just deep sadness that she wasn't accepted. She was attached to the knowing that she was not accepted or loved by her biological father. So when we went in and we started looking at the unconscious pattern that she's not enough, the unconscious pattern that she's not lovable, the unconscious pattern that she's not wanted, and we paid attention to that pattern and started to deprogram the pattern and then reprogram it with she is enough, she is lovable, and she cannot control how her father or her father's family chooses her or not. She can only control how she allows herself to accept it. And along with other holistic right, entities, such as shifting your diet, 
such as getting enough rest, such as staying hydrated, such as watching the thoughts, right? We have this narrative in our mind that's always going. And when we give ourselves permission to meditate and give ourselves permission to just be the detached observer, that's my definition of meditation, right? My definition of meditation is just watching the monkey mind, <laughs> watching the madness, right? When you really sit still, and watch your mind go because everyone's like, oh, you have, I can't shut my mind down. I can't meditate. Well, the mind is meant to think. That's the purpose of it. So when you just watch the mind do what it just naturally does without judgment, without criticism, just as a detached observer, just watching it and just letting it go like the ticker tape that it is right? Because the mind is just regurgitating and vomiting all these unconscious thoughts, patterns, beliefs, right? Feelings. And you just watch it detached. You start letting go of your grasp of creating meaning towards those unconscious patterns, right? So we deprogrammed her and then we reprogrammed her and no surgery, no chemo, no nothing, got back to her doctor three weeks later, the lump is gone. In addition to that, she was able to um, rekindle her relationship with her father. So I share this story with you because miracle we may call it, but I just call it the new medicine. The understanding that when we allow ourselves to Exactly. Our bodies are meant to heal naturally. We allow ourselves to be in a state of stillness and we allow ourselves to be in the state of just calm and peace and positivity, right? And the belief that you can heal, right? The body will give itself, you'll give, you'll give the body permission to heal itself, right? It's like, we're the ones that interfere in the healing of the body, because we're popping this and we're popping that and we're stressed out about this and we're regurgitating that. Instead of just saying, oh, I'm not feeling well, I'm ill, changing those words to instead of I'm ill, I'm healing, right? And just give yourself permission to be still, right? It's wonderful, like <laughs> when COVID hit, for me, it was like a moment of hallelujah, because I woke up to all of this back in 2010 and I had a very clear knowing of what was to come in 2020. So for me, when COVID hit, it was a moment of finally people are going to understand that they need to sit still and start paying attention. Right. So we were given that gift of um, quarantining and being stuck with nothing but our thoughts and being bored. Right. And it was an opportunity for people to slow down and an opportunity for people to start recognizing what is important to them. An opportunity to see that, you know, COVID was something that you can just heal with teas and rest and natural medicines, right? It's just, it really started changing the lens, right, of what Mm -hmm. of how we can actually shift the understanding of healing oneself. So some examples that I'd like to share with you guys of root cause to dis-ease or pain or illness, right? I mentioned to you the right side of the body is something that has to do with the masculine, an attachment you may have with the masculine that was the breast cancer. Um, some An issue with your knee means a lack of flexibility. Okay. And, and these root causes are quite sensical, right? They're not very out of this world, right? Knee, flexibility, knee, your knee is something that flexes, right? So if you're having issues with your knee, pay attention. Where am I lacking flexibility in life? Where can I be more flexible? Right? If you have issues with your back, right? Where are you not being supported? Where are you not supporting yourself? right? Back support, right? If you have an issue with, I just had, a, I had another client that had prostate issues, okay? He was a gentleman, 62 years old, and never had an issue in the bedroom, right? And all of a sudden, 
he was having issues in the bedroom and he was developing prostate. He developed prostate cancer. We worked on the issues in the bedroom, which was just his recognition or his attachment to not being a good enough lover for his partner, right? His attachment to getting older, right? And not being able to perform correctly, not being able to be the divine masculine that he wanted to be for his woman, right? And when we worked on that, prostate cancer was gone. Now, granted, it's a whole holistic perspective, right? We changed his lifestyle, we changed his diet, right? We we looked at the emotional, right? We looked at the the patterns, right? The unconscious patterns, right? We looked at the trauma, right? He had some trauma around not being enough, right? Around he was bullied as a little boy. He He's a, an emotionally sensitive being. If I don't know if you've heard of HSPs, highly sensitive people. I myself am a highly sensitive person and that's what makes me so intuitive. Um, and he was bullied for such because he really allowed himself to feel his emotions as a little boy. And, you know, living in a society where it's like, boys don't cry, right? He had this feeling of not being worthy or not being enough. We worked on that trauma as well. Prostate cancer is gone. So I've had loads of cases, right, to show that this is the new medicine, to show that this is the new way of us being able to take back control of our health, right? To recognize that we don't have to go outside of us, that we don't need to have somebody else be our guru, be our doctor, be our teacher, be our, we don't need anybody to intervene, right? In what innately we know within ourselves already. But because we're so busy and we're so distracted and we don't really give the importance to meditation like we need to. And meditation is just sitting in your stillness, sitting in your silence, listening to sound frequencies. That's another level of the new medicine, right? Sound frequencies. Sounds have vibrations to heal the body, right? So when we give ourselves permission to see that these beautiful mechanisms, these, these beautiful meat suits that we've chosen in this lifetime, right, have the capacity to heal itself. We just have to get out of its way and let it do its job, right? Then we're golden. Then we're absolutely golden. So I wanted to share some things around, oh, let's go there. You create your reality. Oh, let me tell you. So when that disease comes in or that illness comes in, I believe it's not my mother had breast cancer and that's why I have breast cancer. now. Well, if you think that that's the case and that's what you're attracting because you create your reality, right? We create everything, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I know that's a really hard thing to swallow, especially when you look back and you're like, fuck, I asked for that. Yes, my darling. This planet Earth we live in is called school. And we come down to planet Earth to experience all of these experiences, the good, the bad, and the ugly, to learn lessons that we need in order to usher us through our evolutionary process. So with that knowing that you create your own reality, pay attention. Pay attention to your thoughts. Pay attention to your words. Pay attention to what you're calling in, right? The simplicity of, oh, I'm sick. I'm not feeling well today. Shift that. I'm healing, right? I'm sick. The vibration, I'm sick versus I'm healing, very different vibration, right? Words are power, right? There's a doctor, a Japanese doctor. And his name is escaping me, but he did an experiment with water. Okay. And actually let's go to the plant one. He did, he, he, he labeled all these different plants with different words. You are ugly. You are beautiful. You are love. I hate you. And the ones that had positive affirmations grew and bloomed lovely. 
the ones that had negative ones didn't, right? There was another doctor that did with water free with water, and it was the same, positive, negative, beautiful crystallized structures. The one that had positive affirmations, distorted crystallized structures. The ones that had negative, Masaru Emoto. Thank you, Joshua. Okay, so there's power in everything that we do and everything that we don't do. So when we give ourselves permission to really look within and not so much from the lens of criticizing oneself, but being more curious, like, hmm, why did I do this today? Why did I say that today? This is interesting. I'm noticing that I have a pattern. I'm noticing that I'm repeating this same thing. What's that expression? Doing the same thing over and over and over again, expecting a different result, the, the definition of insanity. Right, like really paying attention to all those little things, all those little, all those little patterns that you have within yourself, and asking yourself, is this serving me? Is this not serving me? Right? We had this beautiful eclipse a couple of days ago, and I'm sure all of you are feeling it in some way, shape, or form. Right? And if you're not, then we got some numbing going on <laughs> because we are getting zapped. Right. I believe the eclipse has come to open up this portal for us to receive these beautiful divine frequency codes. Right. I'm a channel and I receive divine frequency codes, divine codes, Christ consciousness codes, galactic codes. We got different words for the same thing. And I channel them through. And that's the work that I do with my people. But now humanity's frequency is rising. So the masses are waking up. All right. And that means we're all receiving these codes. So please take care of yourselves. Hydrate. Barefoot in, barefoot in the grass. Ground yourselves. Get enough rest. Right? If you're feeling the mania, put your hand on your heart and take deep breaths and say, I am okay. I am okay. I'm okay. Watch the mania. Don't judge the mania. Don't fall into the madness. Just watch the madness. And when you watch it, detached observer, it just goes on through. We're in interesting times, my love. And this is exactly the best time to come to Expansion Alchemy because we have an array of amazing topics. And you have just heard only three others, right? We got several others more to go. So I hope to see you guys in the next couple of days as well. Because this is a wonderful platform to really help you usher in the new normal. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, there is a new normal being created. And Expansion Alchemy is a place to be in order to be one up in this conversation. right? Because all of you that are here are leaders in this conversation. We need you all to give yourselves permission to work on yourself heal yourselves, be the light that you're meant to be so that you can shine for those people that are around you, right? That's how this beautiful mechanism works, right? Each one of us do our work. We shine our little light. And then other people are like, wow, what's going on with you? You're different. Let me find out, right? And then we pass along the love. So I want to give you a couple of little things is that you can do in order to start recognizing if you do have an illness or a disease that you want to look into. And we talked about subconscious patterns, paying attention to whatever patterns are repeating in your mind, what your self-talk looks like, right? If it's instead of I'm sick, I'm healing, right? A beautiful practice you can do at the end of the day is what I call a body scan, right? So when you're in bed... Right? And I, I always suggest like minimum half an hour, shut off the electronics, right? Maybe light a candle, right? Maybe light some palo santo, right? Do whatever feels yummy to just get. And then you scan your body from head to toe. Okay. And in that scanning of the body, right? Just pay attention. Where does it feel crunchy? Where does it feel icky? Where does it feel sticky? 
right? And you can place your hand on that area. Let's say your heart feels kind of like contracted or kind of feels a little, ugh. You just place your hand on your heart and you simply say, I love you all as well. I love you all as well. And you just mantra it out. As the prayers, <laughs> as the prayers were coming in, right, here in, in Egypt, right, confirmation, that's this beautiful synchronicity, right, that we have the capacity to heal ourselves, right? We are images of God. And we're waking back up to that. We've been duped to think that everything's outside of us. We're remembering that everything is within. And all we need to do is believe and have faith in such. So I love you guys so very much. I think I saw something about frequencies here. Yes, thank you. Frequencies are a beautiful thing to listen to. And it could be as simple as going to YouTube. Okay, this is the information's out there. Okay, let's say you're having like, a little bit of a, you had a stressful day and you got stress going on. You put stress, frequencies, eight hours, if you sleep eight hours, and the first one that pops up, trust that's the one that is, and you're playing it as you sleep. What happens there? When you're in an unconscious state, you're receiving whatever's around you and you're receiving these beautiful frequencies that will help you heal. Our bodies are meant to heal naturally, meditation alone. Healed 85% of my problems. Yes, 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 sister. We all have this power inside of us. Beautiful. And yes, miracle tones. I'm getting better every single day. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you, my loves. Beautiful. It's healing within us is a new norm. Yes, we are the healers. Let us shine. Amen, sister. Ah, I love you guys. This is wonderful. So again, my name is Melissa Faith Ramirez. I look forward to seeing you guys in Expansion Alchemy. This is one leg of the work that I do. I'll be back on here again. I believe it's day three, All talking right. about how to heal the divine union within and without. I'd love to see you guys there as well. Aloha. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. Oh, that was always beautiful. I always love listening to Melissa. She brings all the vibes. Her and I are so similar in so many ways. <laughs> um, you're on tomorrow again as well. Okay, wonderful. Yeah. Um, I wanted to backtrack a little bit about what you said about the um, the doctor that did the studies with water. So mm -hmm. something I've really been called to recently. Um, so I just came back from Peru a couple months ago, and I was doing an initiation into ayahuasca so I can facilitate and serve the medicine. Um, but I also did Shipibo diets. And uh, the whole thing with diets is getting rid of earthly pleasures so you can be connected to the pleasures of the plants and each plants have mm -hmm. gifts. Um, anyway, so one of my diets was coming through and she had me when I say she, like this particular spirit of this plant um, comes to me as in female form, like plants aren't like are genderless. <laughs> but for me, this particular plant comes in as a female form. So what she came to me and she was like, I was sitting in meditation and she came to me and she's like, okay, our bodies are made up of 70% water. Our bodies are made up of so much water use water to alkalize yourself, use water to heal yourself. So I have these drops with my diet in it and I put them into my water right before I drink it. But before I drink it, I put a prayer into the water. I want this water to heal me. I want this water if I don't have bottled water, like I have a filter at my house, but if I don't, like if I'm not at home, if I have to use like bottled water, like plastics, I don't know how long that water has been sitting in there. Like I want this water to heal me. I want it to be mm -hmm. like full of all good medicine. And then you could also use it to manifest what you want. Our bodies are literally made up of 70% water. Put your prayers of what you want into the water. I want to manif manifest a home. I want to manifest a partner. I want to manifest whatever. And when you drink it, receive that water. Receive it with all that you have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, water. So I wanted to back that up with a little bit of what you said. Yeah, technically 99% water based on the molecules and molecules. 
yes. Brain 75%. Yes. Well, close enough. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And, and speaking of thank you, Anya, thank you for saying that because gratitude is also a really beautiful way for us to heal. It's like, thank you for this illness that's helping me to pause so I can see the power that I have within myself and start shifting life differently and living it from a different manner. So gratitude is massive as well. Gratitude is the ultimate form of receivership. It is one of my favorite medicines. I host gratitude circles every Thursday here. Mm. Um, I couldn't today because of this event, but it'll be on <laughs> next weekend or next week. So gratitude, ultimate form of receivership, not only what you're grateful for, but why you're grateful for it. Mm. Why you're grateful for it puts you back into that feeling of what you're grateful manifesting is all about feeling so why am I grateful for this and not just like oh I'm grateful for this water I'm grateful for this crystal I'm grateful for my glasses I'm grateful for this pen mm -hmm. like mindlessly thinking of gratitude but like mm -hmm. why are you grateful for it I was at Starbucks someone held the door for me I was carrying two cups mm -hmm. thank you thank you for holding that door for me thank you because I would have spilled it all over myself so thank you <laughs> all righty thank you Melissa for all of that <laughs> All righty, let's go back here. Before we move on, do we have any questions, comments, concerns? Feel free to go on. Um, and Genevieve is still on. Ross and Nico hopped off. But do we have any questions for any of the speakers, for myself, anything before we move on? Yeah, jump in. I do have to go. <laughs> so if you do have anything for me, please ask me. Nope. Guess not. All righty. I'm Anya. <laughs> All righty. So one final stat for you guys. Um, engaged employees are the absolute backbone to every company's success. Based on findings in the Wellable, by fostering a culture of engagement, engaged employees spend 57.5 extra working hours monthly. That's a lot resulting in a remarkable 17% boost in productivity. Like we said already earlier, $8 trillion are lost in productivity and you can help your company with that. At Expansion Alchemy, we recognize the importance of a balance in an employee's life by personal development, health, relationships, spirituality, and business. Our program supports not just physical well-being, but also personal development, social connections, financial stability, and community engagement. According to research, um, employees thriving in all of these are 36% more likely to recover from illness, any hardships, as well as injuries. So to consider. All right, so what does this mean? Unlocking organizational success. Are you ready to lead your company towards unprecedented success and growth? Look no further than Expansion Alchemy. So we are a holistic wellness benefit designed for consumers, B2C, as well as B2B for entire organizations to help empower organizational excellence. Our mission at Expansion Alchemy is to make your employees healthier, more productive, more engaged, and more satisfied, in turn, bringing you more ROI. <laughs> and we have already seen that. It's real. So why your company needs expansion alchemy? In today's fast-paced fast world, challenges like disengagement, dissatisfaction, and the great resignation are threatening organizational stability. Employees are seeking more purpose, they're seeking growth, or they're seeking positive work environments, leading to misalignments between the expectations of what they want when they first get hired and what the company is actually offering. So the solution? At Expansion Alchemy, we're the one that are bridging the gap in a holistic, beautiful approach to well-being and empowerment. You've already seen four of our teachers. You'll see more of them, the rest of them, throughout the next two days. Our solution focuses on, again, the five pillars, personal development, health, relationships, spirituality, and financial wealth, empowering your employees to thrive both personally and professionally. So let's talk a little bit of ROI. Employee engagement isn't just a buzzword that's everywhere. It's a proven driver for business success. A recent study shows that companies with engaged employees outperform their competitors by 202%. That's a lot. 
Additionally, engaged employees spend 57.5 extra working hours per month, leading to 17% increase in productivity. And this is the one that I was talking about earlier, a 26% higher revenue per employee. And this is from Business Leadership Today. So we encourage you to schedule a call with us. Let me put this in the chat, actually. So we've thrown a lot of a lot of information at you, and we've emphasized the importance of prioritizing um, employee well-being with your organization, as it's highlighted in our presentations that we've had. Fostering these employee well-being in a beautiful, holistic way not only leads to happier employees, but also to a significant revenue increase, twenty-six percent per employee. We encourage you to take a look at all that we've said, take a look at through the workbook and really reflect on what's the impact that a thriving work culture can have for your company's success. If you're interested in exploring Expansion Alchemy, how we can support you and your efforts, please schedule a call and let's talk about employee well-being. But before we do that, I do have some fast acting bonuses for you guys. So like I mentioned, we have um, we sell to both individuals as well as corporations. If you want to try out Expansion Alchemy for yourself before bringing it on to your higher ups, your executives, whoever needs to learn about this, if you sign up between now and April 15th, you can get a year long membership at a 20% discount using code DX2024. So Expansion Alchemy is $99 per employee per month or per person per month, $999. You get two months free if you do the year-long membership and you can get $200 off, 20% off by using code DX2024 by April 15th. That code works till April 15th. If you are interested in it for your company, if you schedule a call with us before April 19th, so before next Friday, um, Expansion Alchemy has a magazine, Expansion Alchemy magazine. So we reach 21 million people globally. That's It's in many airlines, it's in uh, many newsstands, our magazine is everywhere. 21 million people reading Expansion Alchemy globally every time it's released. So you will get a full ad inside Expansion Alchemy valued at $1,500 just by for talking to us. It might not be for you. This might not be the right solution for you, but no obligations. If you just jump on a call with us, you will get this ad. And that's a sample of one of the um, magazine issues and then some of the inside covers that we have. Full page ad for you guys just by jumping on a call with us. So again, I put the um, the link in to schedule a call. I put the link in the chat. So feel free to open it up, schedule a call for us. But if you'd like to try it out as an individual, just for yourself, go to expansionalchemy.com. And let me put that in the thing. Expansionalchemy.com. Simple as that. And then we will go ahead and chat about everything else that we need to chat about. So the bigger your companies are, the bigger discounts that you receive. So it is $99 per employee per month. However, if your company is bigger, depending on the size of your company, we will um, we will give bigger discounts. So that's why we encourage you to just jump on a call with us and see if it's the right fit for you. You guys already know a bit about Expansion Alchemy. So inside Expansion Alchemy, you will be receiving... 12 calls per month. We have 12 teachers all teaching on those five pillars, personal development, health, relationships, spirituality, business, financial wealth. So myself, Melissa, Genevieve, Nico, Ross, Gary, all the ones that you've met today, along with all the ones you'll meet throughout the next two days. We have a whole arsenal of classes that were already given. So you have back access to all of those classes already there. They're organized by those five categories and they're organized by teachers as well. We have a community, you have support, you have access to chat support between myself, between my team, between all of the teachers. You can go into the back office, talk to them. You could sign up for one-on-ones with the teachers as well. All of that is given to you um, in the workbook at the in the back. It shows everything that's included in Expansion Alchemy. But 12 classes per month. Um, yeah, need to know the time as different times. Okay, so we have classes every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday 
at 1 p.m. Eastern. I don't know what time that is for you, as well as Monday and Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern. So this time, whatever time we started today, whatever time that was for you. Um, we don't do classes Friday evenings. And obviously, if we count up every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then again, Monday, Wednesday, then there's going to be a lot more than 12 classes. So there will be some days that there is no classes. But once you're inside, once you're in the portal, um, we have a calendar, we have schedules set, and you have notifications for every class. You don't have to show up to all of them. They are recorded, and they will go into the back portal. Um, and we do that similar to what we did with this event. We have an 8, 8 p.m. class as well as a 1 p.m p.m. class because there are people on multiple different sides of the world. For example, Genevieve is in Australia, Nico's in Belgium, like Melissa's in um, Egypt at the moment, myself, I'm in Colombia. So like we have teachers and I understand we have students all over the world as well. So I, we try to divide it up so everyone can attend at least some of the classes. So I am Pacific Time, San Diego. Yeah, so you would be two hours beforehand. So 11 a.m. would be our morning classes and then six o'clock would be your evening classes. Yeah, I don't know what the Malaysia time difference would be. Um, any questions? Nope, all righty. Well, then we will see you tomorrow for more goodies. Um, we have Melissa back on tomorrow. I will be talking about, um, I believe Nico's, no, Nico's not on tomorrow. I'll be talking about uh, subconscious reprogramming. Um, well, we'll be talking about communication in the workplace as well. And then Nikki's talking about um, Taoist philosophies in the workplace. So we will see you all tomorrow. Tomorrow is 1 p.m. Eastern time, same as Saturday, 1 p.m. Eastern time. So whatever time that is for you guys, we will see you there. Good night. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ciao.